Well, a shocking new report alleges humiliating treatment, physical violence, and unlawful arrests in the immigrant and asylum seeker community in Israel. The research by the Hotline for Refugees and Migrants for 2019 is based on dozens of testimonies, accusing the authorities of illegally detaining those suspected of visa violations. They are said to have been detained in facilities like the Yahalom Detention Center at Ben Gurion Airport. In 2019, it held more than 11,000 detainees, including 370 children, in subhuman conditions. Alhaji Fofana is an asylum seeker in Israel, originally from the Ivory Coast, and the CEO of the African Students' Union in Israel. And he joins me now. Thank you so much for joining me. Yes. Thank you very much, and thank you for having me. Of course. And, uh, yeah, I'm very happy uh, to join this uh, conversation because it's really related to what I've been doing in my community and also what the organization uh, have been doing. But um, actually, uh, I think this is um, it's really it's, it has a very negative impact on me as a leader, but I would say mainly to the community as a whole because the system is built on this. It's built to fail this generation of asylum seekers and also their children. So I'm not surprised, but this might be surprised to many people because I'm every day immersing into the situation, meeting people, meeting parents and schools. So I know how this has a very huge impact on the, uh, on the community. Sir, I understand your organization is doing work to help protect the migrant and asylum seeker community. Tell me how yeah. reading these testimonies has affected you and how bad is the problem really? Um, it affected me negatively because it's something I've been fighting for for five years and uh, still there is no success, but uh, I'm still optimistic and I never give up. And I believe one day um, the truth will prevail and uh, these children will have their right to a better education. But also the community, mainly family members, they are very shocked. They are very shocked and disappointed to the type of education that their children are having, are having. So it's not a surprise to me sitting here as a leader, because this is what I've been preaching to my people, but it is a surprise to the entire world to hear such a news in this 21st century. Well, you know, yeah, obviously really, right. 2019 wasn't the first time these in incidents took place. It was going on before then. Why is this just being exposed now when it's obviously been going on for some time? Okay, perfect. Um, as we all know, maybe not too many, but to me, we know that in Israel, when it comes to legal issue, it's always silence mm -hmm. until mm -hmm. the end result. Mm -hmm. It's something that they know when there is a right, mm -hmm. there is a human right, mm -hmm. and they treat it accordingly mm -hmm. to the law. Mm -hmm. But once mm -hmm. it's on this side, they keep it mute, mm -hmm. and it is a legal issue. They work on it, and it will not expose. It's always silence. Mm -hmm. Only only information they knew that is not relevant, or maybe even the migrant community cannot fight against, then it will be exposed. So with that being said, now that it has been exposed, do you believe that the Israeli government will take any measures to change the way that this issue is being handled? Um, yes, first of all, I will say, even before, they did very little to this situation. But I believe now that it has exposed out, so the leaders, the Israeli leaders, those involved in the lawmaking or the executive, they will be able to involve more and make it already a legal issue and make it a right for the community or the asylum seekers, uh, children, to have this right. Because what have passed has already been passed. But currently, we are looking forward to see how this will be able to improve, how they will be able to invest more time and more effort to, to make it available into all the, uh, the cities. Yeah. I do want to switch gears to a little bit of a different story for just a minute. Uh, there was a kindergarten in Petah Tikva that's now allowing mm -hmm. asylum seeker children to attend a local kindergarten after a long battle. What kind of a victory is this for those you know, who are fighting in your community, especially after you were speaking about uh, you know, children and having a hard time uh, being assimilated into the society here? Well, first of all, this is a very a big win for me sitting here and also for those who already fought for this. But um, I believe uh, there is more to do. 
I believe there's more to do because this is in only one section and it took many years to gain this victory. So I will ask them to continue to fight in order for all the other cities in Tel Aviv, in Israel, to have this opportunity and uh, not only limited to what they've gained now. Because we do believe that the basic knowledge starts from this kindergarten. Because there are many children today, even we at the education, uh, to the higher education here, we are struggling with this. We have children that we want to send to higher education, they finish their high school. But it is very challenging for them to, to meet the criteria because their level is very low. Right. And all this is because of the poor basic education they have from the beginning. Well, we do and hope if, that the exposing this report you know, does lead to some positive changes in your community. Mr. Fofana, thank you so much for joining yeah. us today. We really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it.